This is Petrolhead Planet. A guide to the greatest roads and destinations for anyone with a trace of petrol in their veins. We'll show you where to go, why to go there, and bring along the perfect modern performance car icon for each unique location. Simple. We start at home. Okay, close to home. This is Scotland, and it has everything. This is Scotland. This is Scotland. This is Scotland. Pretty epic, isn't it? and you haven't even seen the half of it. The incredible thing about driving through Scotland is the ever-changing landscape and the scale of the scenery in what's perceived as a tiny little country. It might be right next door, figuratively speaking, for an Englishman like me, but there are times that it feels a million miles away. On this episode of Petrolhead Planet, we're taking in the very best of Scotland on the North Coast 500. A 516-mile loop starting in Inverness and then heading all the way up to the North Highlands and clinging to the utterly incredible coastline. It was officially launched in 2015 as a kind of Route 66-style pilgrimage for the UK and has been a vast, soaring success. We're about to show you why, but also ask if now the 500 secret is out, has it ruined the remote, desolate solitude that made it so appealing in the first place? So we have our route, the North Coast 500 is just completely epic, but we need a car that can live up to this location. And we have got the ultimate car. I haven't driven one of these forever. I thought I might never drive one again. 997 GT3 RS, four litre. There might be a better car that's been built in the last like 100 years but I don't think I can think of one at the moment. I can't believe we got one, four litre. Yes, we have the car and the road. It's gonna be a good few days. 4.0, that's all you need to say to any Porsche guy or girl, and they'll know exactly what you mean. The 997 GT3 RS four litre has become an icon, a legend, the last of a breed, and wildly valuable. Annoyingly so, to be honest. But, I get it. It features the final evolution of the Metzger flat six engine with 500 horsepower, a rose jointed rear end and carbon fiber bonnet from the fearsome GT2 RS and all the stuff that made the regular 3.8 litre car so utterly wonderful. Mostly a deep seated and unerring sense of focus and of course a six speed manual gearbox. The 991 GT3 that followed is a pretty cool car, but the 997 GT3 RS 4 litre is the ultimate. At least that's how I remember it. Maybe things have changed. Maybe it's just a relic. Okay, so let's get on with the journey. This is our route, which cuts off the final leg of the NC500 for reasons of time, but embraces all the real highlights. This first part is okay, but really, it's just the foothills before the crazy ascent to driving Nirvana. But you have to tick off the Applecross Pass, which is just off the North Coast 500 route before it heads to Shildig and Gerlach. The pass is craggy and narrow and reaches over 2,000 feet via some Alpine-style hairpins before plunging downhill with incredible views of the Isle of Skye. The scenery is simply mighty, and you'll bump into car clubs from all over the world whilst you're there too. Okay, so I know this is the first episode of Petrolhead Planet and we had the whole planet to choose from and we're in the UK, which seems really lazy. It had to be the UK because this is where I learned to drive properly. This is where I guess I properly fell in love with cars. I loved cars when I was a kid, but when I got to drive them and our roads 
there's just something unique about them. They're lumpy, bumpy, pretty horrible to tell you the truth, but they test a car like literally nowhere else in the world. That's my feeling. And I know that's the old cliche, but I think it's true. No more justification required. Scotland is utterly epic. Just look at this place. Now we're on the first stop, I guess, of the North Coast 500. We've just turned off it, we're on Apple Cross Pass. This is about as bumpy and gnarly as it gets. Single track, but you have to tick it off. So this GT3 RS, the four litre, which was the daddy, the absolute daddy, but that feels like quite a long time ago now, doesn't it? Because the whole world has changed. We have a proliferation of GT3 RSs, GT2 RSs from Porsche. Power output's gone crazy. Everything's PDK, rear wheel steering. McLaren have come along and sort of changed the game with how quick the cars are and how much tech is in them. So does this thing initially feel as magical as I remember, or does it feel a bit of a relic? Well, it's somewhere in between the two, actually. The manual gearbox is a relic. The steering is a relic because it has feel and feedback. And the whole car doesn't have the level of grip and control that the new cars have. Like, just no way. But the feel, the feedback, the sensations that you get through this car is such a sweet spot between like modern proper performance and old school feel. And we want to use it, which means getting away from dodging caravan cyclists and motorcycles. Applecross is a cool destination to tick off, but there are just too many other people. And you end up with issues like this. This is just not the road for a GT3 RS. It's not the Scotland that I love. We need to go and find the real North Coast 500, which is somewhere through all that fog. You know what? Scotland is full of surprises. Turns out whilst I'm wishing us further north already, there's some epic scenery and gnarly single track just north of Applecross on the way to Shieldig, and then again past this gorgeous little village on the way to Torridon and Lochmarie. Okay, it's still not quite GT3 RS country, but as I rediscovered just how gritty and connected this car is, I'm also remembering that in the four litre, the perfect road is usually the one you're on. Okay, so we are in Shieldig, which is down here. We've come from Applecross and we're heading uh, from here up to Gaelock. Some pretty mega roads so far. There's quick stuff, narrow stuff, the whole lot. And where we're heading, which is up towards Gaelock, is really, really good. There's this amazing bit of single track. I know we said Applecross was too narrow and too bumpy for this car, but this is different. It's fantastic. Um, so all good so, so far. We've got to fuel up the crew. We need to fuel up the car. But yeah, it's been great. And I know just beyond Gaelock, there's some really good stuff as well. And then we're up to the bridge. So. So far, North Coast 500, pretty good. And it's it's quite cool coming on all these different roads. We've come across loads of different car clubs. Just around the corner, there's like a 675 LT parked up Lamborghini Bentley. So there's this whole little pilgrimage going on, which is pretty cool as well. Uh, but the best car we've seen so far is this one still. So the plan was to meet up with some of the other car clubs and people experiencing the NC500 for the first time too but everyone is on their own little adventure. Phone signal is pretty patchy. And so we basically ended up waving to other people, missing rendezvous points, and generally getting absorbed in our own journey. But even when you have a four liter RS, it makes sense to veer off the road sometimes and take in more of what the Highlands has to offer. Now, for me, the North Coast 500 is a destination itself. The road is so good, and we've got that Porsche. I would just spend, happily spend days and days driving around it. But it is also a gateway to some amazing experiences. We're gonna head out on Glendu. We're gonna go and see some seals and just enjoy some of what North Coast of Scotland's got to offer. This place is just so cool. How long have we got the boat for, mate? Uh, an hour and a half, I think. So, okay, how long have we been out? About two and a half minutes. <laughs> Got a bloody four litre RS over there. Yeah, here we go. That's flat out. 
Of course, I'm joking. You should take time out from the road and getting out into the water is fantastic. I don't know much about seals, but they're pretty gorgeous and I assume they're pretty quick in the water too. Good aero, I guess, or whatever the equivalent of aero is underwater. There's so much to see and do on the route, it's almost impossible to cover. Go kayaking at Torridon, it is spectacular. Go and see the Russian Convoys Monument in Loch U, where the Arctic convoys would refuel during the war. Try scrambling or rock climbing with Hamlet Mountaineering in Attlebury, or just take a stroll on some of the utterly amazing beaches like Akiniva Beach near Durness, way up north. Anyway, we need to fast forward beyond Shieldag and even Gerlock to the roads just south of Kailescu Bridge, passing the peaks of Benmore Ascent and Conival. This, for me, is where it gets serious. This is RS country. Yeah, this is what we came to find. time I drove a four litre, I was actually a little bit upset about it. I was working for a mag and the rest of the team were like 150 miles away doing a group test with a new McLaren MP412C. It sort of felt like the future was unfolding somewhere else and I was like testing this relic from the past. But now, I mean, quite apart from the fact that you can enjoy that McLaren thought MP412C was a good name for their new supercar. It might be that this was it, you know, that this was the pinnacle of the old school. Whilst cars like Nissan GTR had already shifted the sands of what we came to expect of performance cars and things like four wheel steering, dual clutch boxes, electric power steering, all that stuff was going to be adopted even for purist cars. This was the last stand. It was a moment in time and it is completely timeless. I mean, in 10 years or 20 years, this car will feel this good. Technology might have moved on, but it won't change the fact that when this came out, they'd sort of perfected this old school 911 feel. It's just got everything you want and nothing that you don't. It's too good. It's too good. And it just gets better and better. From Kailescu to Dernest, past the desolate emptiness of Strathdienard to the east, Loch Inchard to the west, it feels like you're entering some sort of crazy, perfectly rendered VR landscape. Spearing through this place in this car is something else. The perfect marriage of awe-inspiring nature that literally takes your breath away and a man-made hero that feels unstoppable and absolutely connected to the roads it's traversing. I think we've just seen the most mind-blowing scenery ever. Absolutely stunning. Uh, but while I'm here, I want to talk about this particular four-litre. This car, I love it. The, this car's lived at Silverstone as a, an experience centre car. They thought it was a pre-pro car, actually. They didn't realise it was a full-on production car. And so it's done 14,000 miles, nearly all on track by God knows how many people, and obviously driven really hard. So the whole thing looks so battle-worn. All the stripes here, these should be red and match over the top, but they're completely faded away. Even the good decals are, are faded away. It's got steel brakes, semi-knackered to be honest, all the scripts come off them and everything is fully worn, fully battle scarred. Inside the steering wheel all the Alcantara is worn away, same with the gear shifter. The car has lived a life and I guess the point is this is a super special car, only 600 made. The intrinsic value in this car, it's not in like 
the decal pack and whether the pore script on the caliper is perfect and whether there's, you know, perfect front balance with no stone chips and stuff. It's about the way the thing drives. People spent dedicated months and years of their lives to get to this point to a car that makes you feel as good as the 4-liter RS. And this one has made probably more people feel good than any other 4-liter RS, so I love it for that. Completely battle-worn, the no given 4-liter. If you have a great car, or just a car that you love, enjoy it. Polish it by all means at weekends, but don't forget that the real joy of it is to come somewhere like this and drive the thing. Just drive it. Which is exactly what I should be doing. So I guess it's time to reflect a bit on this car, isn't it? The 4-liter RS. What does make it so special? I've talked a lot about that old school and new school meeting up, but how does that manifest itself? Well, I think it's just the way the car, it has all the old 911 movements. So through a corner, the car's constantly moving around, the steering's chattering around in your hands, and it's got that feeling that there's a lot of weight at the back and not as much at the front, and it may be gonna be a bit reluctant to turn in, but just beneath that old school feel, there's an incredible, like crazy response. So you don't have to bully it into the turns. As soon as you get past that first bit, bang, it wants to turn with you. And so you've now got this front end response, but you can get through the turn, get it in, and just bang. Open the throttle, open the throttle. You never even have to think about it. And the weird thing about this car, it's got a rose jointed rear end from the GT2 RS that the 3.8 didn't have. And it means there's no slack. The car has zero slack anywhere. You accelerate, the response is instant. And it makes it, with that added torque of the four litre, it makes it so easy to drive. And it makes driving so natural. Add all of that stuff up, and you end up with what I think, I think I'm gonna say it, I think this is the best Porsche ever. Full stop, end of. Thing is, you can't declare any car the greatest Porsche ever. Unless you've got a Carrera GT to compare it to. So before I get too carried away and head south to Gretna Green to marry the 4.0, I guess we need to test the theory that this is the best Porsche ever with another car that could lay claim to that title. The Carrera GT arrived in 2004, born from the ashes of a cancelled Le Mans program. Mid-engined, exquisitely engineered in carbon fibre and fitted with a 5.7-litre V10 engine with 604 horsepower and, just like the 4-litre, a six-speed manual gearbox. It gets more beautiful by the day and might be the purest, rawest supercar ever built. The fast, epic section between Hope and Tongue is our last stop on the NC500 and we are doing it in style. This is the final, ultimate, old school, analog supercar. <laughs> the best manual gearbox you could ever experience. I talked about that slight softness just off center that you get with the 911 and then you get the snap of response. This thing's different with this carbon fiber structure. It's carbon fiber tub, but carbon fiber subframes at the front and rear as well. It's so exotic. And what it means is you touch the controls and the car just changes direction. Like the 911, there's something about the way everything melds together in this car that makes it feel like it's all you. It's like nothing else. It's like nothing else. Not quite the 911 texture, but still that absolute connection with the surface. I can feel every time the surface changes. The brakes, they're ceramics, they're quite noisy. They're like the old school ceramic feel where you get that real brushing noise. There's so much feel. The engine 
is utterly, utterly, utterly magnificent. Like, no flywheel effect. I mean, noise and response from the gods and the gearbox. I, this is my favorite gear change in the world. Fourth to third in a Carrera GT with a blip. Like, oh my God. If there are perfect moments in motoring, that's it. A downshift in a Carrera GT with a perfect blip. Unbelievable. Carrera GT or GT3 RS 4 litre, it's almost impossible to say both of these cars are perfect tens. And the North Coast 500, well, it's busier than it once was. And there's no question you need to pick your moments if you're to enjoy it responsibly and with respect to the other people here. But it's breathtaking and wild. There's a real majesty to the way it pours over this incredibly diverse landscape. So that was Scotland and the North Coast 500. We've had all the weather that you could ever imagine. The variety of roads is incredible. This place absolutely lives up to every expectation you might have. And I have to say, we may have brought the two best cars ever. I completely adore them. In fact, I'm worried we've set the bar so high with this first episode that it's all downhill from here. Although, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs>